Hey guys, welcome back. Third part of the uh, matrix stiffness method. We're solving for a beam. It's a tricky question and we've gotten all the way to step five. And step five is the uh, solving for the joint displacement using P minus PF equals SD. And I have some good news for you. If this is uh, making sense to you and you've followed up to this point, the rest of this question is super easy, okay? The rest of this question is literally just doing matrix operations in your calculator and finally writing out the reactions and adding. That's all it is, okay? So uh, the, the tricky part is gone. So with that being said, let's go ahead and let's start to solve this. And if you'll see, I mean, we have everything here that we need, right? We have S, we assembled that, and that is back here. Okay, we have our S, right? We have our P, which is up here, and we have our PF, which is here. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's just write out this formula and, and we can just solve for D. So we have S, okay, and we just need to rearrange it, all right? So we have our S matrix, and I'm not gonna write out the entire S matrix, but uh, I'm, I will show you how to type that into your calculator. So um, when you do, do type this into your graphing calculator, what I do suggest is that you put this S, you store it in a matrix, and then you do S inverse, then you multiply it by the, the, the sum of P minus PF, okay? So that is essentially what you're going to want to do. So it's gonna look something like this in your graphing calculator, and that's going to equal the displacement, okay? So um, take P, okay, in your graphing calculator, put it in as a vector. I can show you how to do that if you'd like. So we have a four by one matrix uh, vector, and yeah, you just go ahead and you put it in here. So we want 200, okay, zero is good, negative 90, zero. And that's stored in your calculator now, it's easy as that. And you're just gonna go ahead and you're gonna go to the matrix, and your, your calculator might be different, we'll clear all that so we get out of the way for you. But you can just go and do operations. So for example, if that's our P, we can go P minus PF, and then, and then store P, and then that's it, okay? So that didn't work because I didn't put PF in, but that's that's exactly what you do, okay? So, and guys, sorry, I did make a little bit of an error before. Uh, I did say that it was one by the number of degrees of freedom. That's an error. I'm sorry about that. It's it's a number of degrees of freedom by one. That's the dimension of these matrices. That's my mistake. I apologize for that. So let's get uh, back to this. So we uh, solve for the joint displacements using P minus PF, okay? And if you just solve this, what you're going to get is you're gonna get a value for D Okay, and this is kind of important, okay? This is this can be a little bit tricky. So um, you're working with pretty small numbers here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to include the units. Okay, we're gonna number this with our code numbers. So always the displacement vector is, we're finding the displacements at the degrees of freedom. Okay, so the, the units of each degree of freedom is gonna correspond with what type of movement it is. So at one, we have a deflection, so that's gonna be meters. But at two, and this is times 10 to the negative three, by the way. Um, so, because we're, we're working in meters, okay. So the second uh, displacement here is going to be a rotation, okay. So our second degree, degree of freedom is a rotation. So we're going to write that as a rad unit. Radian unit, okay. That's what this method gives us. We get our answer in meters and we get our answer in radians. Okay, and uh, this uh, deflection at joint three is going to be a negative, uh, going to be a negative rotation. And we have a positive rotation of 3.2285. Carry a few decimals here, okay, because it can make a difference in the end. Time, uh, times 10 to the negative three rad. Radian. So uh, that's what we've done. We've solved the joint displacements for this beam. And what's the next step? Uh, we're asked to find the member end forces and the support reactions. Perfect. So let's go ahead. Let's move on okay, to step six. So what's step six? Well, step six is going to be the member end forces. Okay, and we have a formula for the member end forces and it's quite straightforward, okay? And like I said before, the hard part is over now. So what we need to do is we need to find the member end uh, displacements, okay, first. So so those are going to be Q and U. Perfect. So how do we find Q and U? Well, U is very straightforward, okay? So from the displacement down here, all right, we're going to find our U vectors. Okay, so our U vectors are going to be always number of degrees of freedom times one. 
And so that's going to be a four by one vector. And the U vectors are, we're gonna have a vector for each member. It's gonna be very similar to the joint, fixed joint vectors. So we're gonna number them according to our analytical model. Okay, so we have six, five, one, two. Okay, that's U1. U2 is going to be one, two, seven, three. And U3 is simply going to be seven, seven, three, eight, four. Okay, so those are our code numbers. And like we did before, uh, we're going to, with the other, like, you know, for example, when we transferred K into S, now we're going to transfer D into each U. Okay, so we're gonna look for uh, numbers that correspond. So there's no six or five in our D. We're, we're looking at the code uh, numbers here. We only have one and two. Those are the only ones that match. So these are both zero. And three and four we have, or sorry, one and two we have, negative 4.4729. And this is all times 10 to the negative 3 meters. And 2 is 0 0.56143 rad. Perfect. Let's go on to the next one. We have 1, 2, and 3. Zero. There's no 7. Perfect. And U3. Okay, we have... 7384, perfect. And 7384 is going to give us a U vector of zero. Okay, we have zero here. Eight, three is going to be, we just copied from that. So 68415. Four is going to be 3.2285. This is times 10 to the negative three times negative three. Perfect, okay, so we've uh, assembled our U vectors, and now we just need to follow the formula for the member end forces. Okay, so the formula for the member end forces is KU plus QF, okay? So uh, we need to do that for each member, okay? So for Q1, and I'm just gonna show you one as an example, and then you can do the rest, okay? Q1, K1 times U1 plus QF1. So what does this mean? Well, K1, if we go back to the initial question, okay, we have our K1 here, and this is why we have to write everything down because later in the question we're gonna use it. Okay, so we have our K1 matrix here, okay? So we're, that we're gonna store that back into our calculator if you want to, you're gonna have to type it in, okay? And you're going to multiply that by U1, which we just constructed, so store this vector in your calculator, multiply K by U, and then once you have that matrix, okay, add that to QF1. Okay, QF1 is what? QF1 was the fixed N uh, vector that we solved in the previous part. Okay, so that was uh, calculated using the fixed N moment formulas that we did before. Okay, and if you go ahead and you just calculate that into your calculator, what you're gonna get is perfect. Okay, so uh, this is uh, our, our, our member N forces, okay? And well, what does this mean? Okay, let's go ahead and we'll label this too. So we have five, six, one, two. So hopefully by now you're kind of getting a, a feel for what these code numbers mean and how to use them. What does this mean? Q, okay, if we go ahead and draw member one, okay, draw member one like this, uh, we just need to follow the code numbers. So essentially these are the end forces acting if we split the beam up into three pieces, okay? So we have uh, the member one here, so we have a reaction force here of one, four, six, point three, three. Okay, six, we have a reaction moment here. If we go ahead and take a look up here, we have um, one, which is this force here. We have negative, so actually this force is down. It's opposite to our analytical model. And we have a rotation, which is in the same direction as our analytical model, 236.78, okay? So these are reactions here, right? And these are degrees of freedom. So these are the, these are the beam moving here, essentially. And these here are reactions. So that's just kind of, this little sketch here kind of gives you an idea of what that Q vector means. So uh, you just need to calculate Q for, again, I know this, this, this stuff is tedious, but you know, you gotta do it, so just get it done. And let's get all the Qs, I'm just gonna write the Qs down. Sorry, this is not QF2, this is Q2. So we have Q1 to Q2 and Q3 here. And this problem is essentially done, okay? Uh, this, what these are, is these are all of the kind of the forces, the sum of all of the forces in, that are acting on the individual members, whether it be 
uh, acting on degrees of freedom or acting as re reactions. So the final step of the question is for us to find the support reactions. And we do that, and that is the final step, step seven. Okay, so the final step is to find the support reactions, and that's fairly simple. Okay, we have an R vector, and our R vector is going to be um, the number of reactions times one. Okay, it's always gonna be that. So if we count how many reactions we have, we have one, two, three, four. So this is also going to be a four by one vector. And like we did uh, previously, the, the R vector consists of the summation of all of the uh, Q vectors, okay, that, that correspond to the numbers here. So if we just uh, label this as we have our code numbers and our code numbers for our reactions now. So we have five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so we put those here, and then we move whatever is 5, 6, 7, or 8 into this vector. So we have, um, from Q, we have Q1, just number 5 here. I don't see any other 5s, so that's 146.33. That's just that one. If we have any 6s, just 1. It's uh, 281.19. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you what I'm doing here. These are the numbers that I'm moving. 7 and 8. Okay, seven, we actually have two entries. In Q2, we have a seven. In Q3, we have a seven because they share the same support. So we're gonna need to add those together. So 143.67 plus 99.79 is going to go into uh, the seventh column here, seventh row, kilonewton. And finally, we have the eighth entry, which is 50.21 kilonewton. All right, and that is it. So we have solved this problem, I know. That was long. It was a few uh, few videos long there, but you know if you've uh, if you were able to kind of follow along with this question and understand what what it was that was happening here, and not even understand so much, but just understand the steps that's that are required, uh, you'll do fine on the test. You know, just make sure that you go back and you program your calculator and you make sure that that your calculator program is in fact working. Thank you so much for watching this, guys. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to do some more matrix stiffness method uh, questions on frames and trusses. So stay tuned for that series of videos. As always, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.